As far as clothing, pretty much I'm not packing that much clothing because I, I have for the, my get home bag that's just to get home so the clothes I'm wearing on my back is pretty much what I'm going to have. I usually have some extra clothing in the back of my work truck, stuff that I don't usually, um, you know, extra stuff like work jackets or work sweatshirts and stuff. I have those in the back in case I need them, but this is the main, only really article of clothing is um, this military type style poncho um, still following in that green color and along with that I have a pair of socks because uh, your feet are going to be the most important part of your prep walking home obviously and these are uh, I get these at REI these are really great um, hiking socks uh, they're called smart wool and they, they all, they're they like kind of a combination of wool and other acrylics and it just it's it's really nice and soft and, and it, it breathes and it insulates even when wet so I always have a backup pair of socks and here's a, an example of some of the type of clothes that I, I tend to try to buy on a regular basis I try to steer away from cotton I mean everybody's heard the adage cotton kills uh, this is a mixture of polyester and cotton, and it's got the uh, <clears throat> the actual Teflon. Um, actually, still have the tag on this one, uh, the Dupont Teflon fabric protector, which repels water. And uh, I tend to get shorts with a lot of little pockets that I can uh, put things in. This is a great. These are one of my favorite pair of shorts that I've picked up recently. I have another pair that I actually wear, and this is one of the newer um, ones, obviously, because I still have the tags on it. But um, I love the, the feature of being able to, uh, I mean, it's a place to put my knife. Um, and everything's got Velcro to make sure nothing falls out of the pocket. Uh, and even in here, you have a little side pocket here for change or whatnot and even have a place to uh, hook something, your keys or whatnot, on the side. So uh, it's just an example when you're searching or looking for clothes to, to get, and this is what I would typically kind of wear in the summer, and I stick with like blues, black, you know, dark blues, blacks, uh, the brown, um, gray, you know, when, when I'm you know, every day, and it, and it just blends in. Navigation. I always keep a map of New Jersey in my pack. Um, and I up the ante on how many maps I have based on the pack that I'm using. This is the get home pack, so obviously I'm not going to be leaving New Jersey. And then I have this Maxpedition map carrying case um, with a compass. And, uh, let me uh, put the camera down so I can open this stuff up and have you take a look. Compass that, that's usually in this pouch here. I also got a compass where I can actually uh, hang it off a carabiner if I needed to when it's closed. In case I want to keep it readily available and not have to keep pulling it out of this pouch. And uh, I've not really, I, I'm starting to learn how to really, I mean I've always used a compass just to do north. Um, south, east, and west, but never train myself on how to gauge elevations and everything else, is what, which is what this uh, compass does. So I'm going to, uh, this year, really start to learn how to uh, work a compass other than just north, south, east, and west. 
uh, and each one of these things have um, these uh, west, uh, north, and south, and the arrow actually illuminates um, at night. You can like literally hold it under the sun for about 15-20 minutes, and then at night these will actually um, have a luminescence so you can see in night. And it's pretty uh, sturdy covering case. And here you have a way to look at your map. It's protected. It's actually uh, double sealed with uh, a zipper. And uh, basically what I have as far as maps is I have the Jersey map and then I have all the trail maps you can get at like a hiking store for the local areas of, from which I would have to be traveling through. So if I want to, I can actually find different trails so I can set, you know, find alternate routes if I have to. If I want to stay away from main roads, I can actually get on the Appalachian Trail or I can get, and I can use these maps to do it. And so I always have trail maps along with a road map. And that's pretty much it. Tools. Now, the knife that I have that you should always, in every one of your bug out bags, you should have one folder knife, one fixed blade knife, and one multi-tool with your type of tools. Now, when I first got this, I mean, I've just seen a lot of bad things on the net. I've read some bad experiences with these, although there's a lot of really cool features as a knife. You have this where you could strap, you know, something here, attach it. You got the, uh, another ferrule rod. It's got directions for emergency rescue type things on the back. So a lot of di cool different features. It comes in a pretty nice sheath. But I just, and it even has a little whistle. In fact, the, the uh, Maxpedition bag has a whistle too as well on one of the straps I forgot to mention. But I'm probably going to replace this with a, another like kind of a bushcraft knife, maybe a K-bar. I haven't decided yet. But this one's definitely going to go to the wayside. But always have a folder and a fixed blade. A fixed blade would be for more your like really heavy use. Your folder blade, since it has um, less strength than a folder, I mean, because you have that bending spot where it's a weak point, uh, but it also folds up and it's more compact. And it would be something that you'd use more of a multi-use knife. This would be more something you'd use for camping or when you're camping once you're stationary, your main heavy-duty type knife. And then a multi-tool, I swear by <clears throat> the Surge. This is uh, the Leatherman Surge. And it's just got everything you need. And I purchased also, to go along with it, uh, the extension for the screwdriver. And I also have in my pack which came with it is the uh, saw and the filer and you have to have a multi-tool it's just uh, especially ones with like pliers like this and I literally have been beating on this for for a, two years now I think and it's amazing it just keeps on I've only broke one aspect of it because I was working with it too hard the little miniature eyeglass um, screwdriver I broke but other than that, everything is held up, and I've really put this thing through the ringer. So I swear by the Surge. I, I've, I've really, and it comes with a really good pouch where you can, you know, add different, you know, attachments to it if you want. And this is my backup file as well in here. As far as sanitation, I just have uh, some... Small rolls of toilet paper, some uh, <clears throat> paper towels inside there, all inside a glad bag, like a small glad bag. And I also have a hand sanitizer too in the pack. Now, along with the hand sanitizer, I also keep usually a little travel soap inside this bag. Now, I kind of loop this, this item into first aid and uh, sanitation, so I'll just throw it into the sanitation. I mean, this is something you'd want to wear if uh, you're, you're trying to remove something that might have gotten stuck in your skin, a thorn or something. You know, you want to put this on while you're working with it. And I might add, I, I did not open up the little first aid kit. In the little first aid kit, I should have said what you should have inside it. 
Um, one of those key items in a first aid kit, I mean, you can build your own or look on the net and see what is in those particular first aid kits and kind of come, you know, put together your own. But uh, you should have tweezers, which that kit that I showed earlier does have, uh, in case you do have to pick something out of your skin or, um, and along with uh, the tweezers, of course, antibacterial wipes and, and alcohol wipes and, but I'm thinking that that's pretty self-explanatory. And if you, the like I said, the REI um, med medical kits are very, very lightweight, uh, geared to be lightweight, and they generally have all those items. And you can look on the back to to see um, what's in each one of the, uh, even the hiking, day hiking uh, first aid kits are pretty good, which would be good enough for this pack since you're looking for, you know, you're looking at maybe a 24-hour period and that's it. That's that's what you're trying to store in this bag. Uh, my ordinary phone that I carry with me at all times anyway. Uh, <clears throat> comms are one of my weakest links as far as prepping. And even in my bags going up further... I don't really have any major uh, types of comms to use besides your Midland radios, which aren't exactly the best in the world at all. Uh, the Midland radio, uh, which is those radios you can pick up at camping stores, are the radios that hunters will use, and they're said to have a 30-mile range on some of them. That's kind of a misconception. That's only a 30 mile range if, you, if you've got no obstruction whatsoever. And that's, especially in just in where I live, there's lots of hills and valleys. And so it's just, it's not, not going to work. Probably, I, I've already tested it during Sandy and it went no further than a mile. Uh, it's great for if you're in multiple vehicles traveling or bugging out. And it's not an EMP scenario, so you're able to use your vehicle and you'll be able to communicate with those radios to each other while you're driving. That's always a great idea or a great thing to have. I just have this with me. And those of you who have been kind of holding off having a smartphone, if you can afford it, and I know they're very expensive, some of them, and some of them you can work out to get them cheaper through a, a plan, you know, a phone plan. But the reason why I have this, and I'm pretty sure I've shown this before, but you can have... Uh, Kindle on here and I have tons and tons of information on this phone. Uh, some of it's just reading material just for my own benefit uh, and other stuff it's actual um, like the survivalist and this is a really good magazine if you guys haven't subscribed to it I highly recommend it. It's just a really good magazine but you can also get it in digital form, which I have most of them already on here. Um, so, there's Ron Foster's uh, book. So, that's why I would recommend getting one of these smartphones, because it's just, there's a lot of things you can um, put on here. It's almost like you have your own mini little personal computer. And the only problem is power. Enter cell, uh, you get it at Radio Shack. It has two uh, batteries, AA batteries, and what it does is it will charge your phone or your iPod. As you see, you have the little iPod adapter. Um, now, my cert my particular cell phone, it won't charge it completely. It'll give it about a half a charge, and basically, let me see. You basically turn it on and then you plug it into your phone and then it's got the other adapter which is more wide on the other side for other type of phones and that's it and it will drain the batteries in here but it will give you at least on my phone it gives me about half a life 